All right, man, that was Machine Gun Kelly with uh, Wild Boy right here on Sports Unplugged, brought to you by Wingstop. Got my man Cameron Smith in the building with us, man, from Comcast, and my man Big Med on the boards pushing the buttons. We're talking all things football today. Uh, let's go around the league real quick. Patriots back to their old annex, uh, 34 to 13 over the Titans. Uh, the Titans are just a mess. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're just they, a mess. There's no way to explain that squad. They're a, a dumpster fire. That's the best I could do. Like, if you just put a whole bunch of stuff in the dumpster and lit it on fire and just let it burn. <laughs> that's, that's the Titans? That's, that's, that's the Titans. The Titans. <laughs> they're, they're dumpster fire. I mean, the, I mean, if you look at the Titans, you know, they have Matt, uh, well, not Matt, uh, Lock, Jake Locker. Jake Locker. Jake Locker. Uh, Chris even Johnson. Though, even though, <laughs> okay, hold on, before we go any further. To a memo to any uh, quarterback that's out there and thinks they just want to go ahead and tackle the guy that they throw a pick to. Yeah, Stop it. Yeah. Please. You know, Stop. defensive Jeez. players live for that, to get the ball and be uh, going the other way. That's the first person they look for. Where's the quarterback? Uh-huh, Everybody want to put a helmet on the quarterback. Stop. I want to put him on his back. Because you're live bait. Stop like, I would tell now. my quarterback, just run out of bounds. As soon as you throw the interception, run to the sideline, the nearest sideline, and stand there and watch the play. Well, we saw what happened last year with Jay Cutler. <laughs> yeah. Broke that thumb trying it. to tackle somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rams, and Lions was, Rams and the Lions was a very competitive game. You can see right now the difference in the Rams' persona and state of mind with uh, Jeff Fisher as the head coach. Right. They're actually right. going to try. And Bradford, they're actually going to compete in games. And the Lions were on the ropes mm-hmm. for the majority of that game. But at the end of the day, I guess their talent just uh, – Matt Stafford decided to wake up and start to play. Yeah, right. he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, Falcons, Chiefs. Woo, who pissed off Matt Ryan? Mm-hmm. I'm glad they <laughs> did because Matt Ryan's on my fantasy team, he, so I'm glad they did. <laughs> somebody pissed that man off, and he was like, look, I'm tired of everybody talking that. I'm, I'm the reason why we ain't moving along. All right, I'm going to make it happen. Julio Jones, they got weapons, mm-hmm. man. You almost forget Roddy White yeah. is on the team. Yeah. yeah. Now, I was a little, uh, Turner, is, is, is Turner slowing down? I think he is, yeah, man. I mean, a lot game. of wear and tear on his body, man. Yeah. Even though he's a big guy, but still, man, the, the, the amount of contact that he takes going through those holes and trying to break tackles, it's, it's starting to build up on and, him. You know, he, he's a short, stocky guy, a lot of carries. Yeah. A lot of carries. Yeah. And the short, stocky guys, they go quick. Mm-hmm. What What is with the Kansas City Chiefs? At one time, I thought they were putting together, the deep on the defensive side of the ball, I thought they were putting yeah. together a nice yeah. squad. What's going on? Uh... Cassell fooled him? Well, no, not Cassell. Cassell didn't fool him. Here's the thing, man. Uh, well, you're talking about defense. Yeah. There's not much defense you can do when you have a hurry of offense and you have Matt Ryan at the reins and you have uh-huh. Roddy White, Tony Gonzalez, Mike Turner, yeah. Roddy yeah. White. Yeah. Yeah. You just got guys coming yeah. everywhere. everywhere yeah. right? And the thing about it is Julio Jones is the man on that team. I don't care what nobody says. He's small. Julio uh-huh. Jones is that guy on that team right now. That man is 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 a man, period. And, and the, somebody said this weekend – by the end of this year, you're going to be putting him up there with, with Calvin Johnson. Who's the better receiver, him or A.J. Green? Oh, Julio. Yeah, you you gotta gotta go. I, I mean, last year was, now, last now, year was A.J. No, some last year was see. A.J. Because you think he's more skilled. He's a more skilled receiver. But when it just comes to pure athletic talent, talent. And, and, and go get it. It's not too many yeah. people that match that guy. Because, you know, man, I, I, I might be retracking here because – AJ Green, I think, is probably more skilled wide receiver. I well, mean, he's, everything he's had some sick catches too. Man. But I mean, just the uh, just just look. If you, have you seen Julio Jones is a big dude, and he's a gonna get dude. you yards after and, the catch. Exactly, man. he's gonna. Get and I don't those. think AJ Green can do that as well as Julio Jones. But I mean, it's a toss up between the two. They're both really good. I, I think I think Julio, Julio right Jones is the better. He's the burner. AJ Green's not really that run by you guy like mm-hmm. Julio is but I he's think, a more skilled receiver I think far about hands and running routes I like oh AJ. I think we'll go with AJ and, and it might come with Julio with time you never mm-hmm. know right. uh, Eagles and Browns I know Michael Vick listen <laughs> there was one point in this game I was looking at Michael Vick's face and he said oh damn this I, like, I just I, like, I just saw like one look on his face where he was like damn this I can't lose Cleveland dude. after all this I talked about being a championship team damn this come on we got to do something I'm finna scramble Deshaun y'all dropping balls I'm finna scramble we got to do something I cannot lose to Cleveland but there was a play in the game uh, Cleveland Browns rookie Trent Richardson oh my God. comes through the hole about a nice little what you think a four or five yard run. Mm-hmm. Kurt Coleman, Kurt Coleman, the safety for the Eagles, sheds off a blocker, and it's Oklahoma drill, mano y mano. Man, when I tell you, my guy, maybe Meg can put the video up later. 
when he hits this dude and explode, he knocks his helmet like 10 yards back. And they tried to hurry up and pick up his helmet, and Kurt even tried to hurry up and get up. <laughs> but he had to sit for a minute and say, what the hell well, just happened to me? But what's, I got to ask you this. What's going through your mind when you try and tackle Trent Richardson up top? Well, see, I mean, let me, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Here's what he's thinking. I've been in the league. I got a couple of years on me. This is a rook. I'm going to show him, you know, what – being in the league three, four years and working in the weight room, this is not Alabama's weight room. Well, this is not your normal <laughs> running back. No. This dude is like a pocket Hercules square. Yeah. I yeah. call him Maurice Jones Drew square. Mm-hmm. That same type of frame, but just... And he's a little, and he's a little taller than he is. And his, he runs so violent. He's nasty, man. His pad nasty. level... When I saw his pads, I said, all I see is shoulders on Trent Richardson. I don't see his helmet. That means but, he's a missile. <laughs> but it, it had to come a point in time where the DB was like, okay, I'm either going to try and do it up top no, or I'm going to take it low. He said, oh, shit. And it was over. <laughs> it, but right the closer that Richardson got to him, you got to be like, okay, Listen, he getting bigger it's just like and bigger and bigger. My bigger. granddaddy said, what's the last thing to go through a fly's mind before he hits the windshield? His ass. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened to Kurt Coleman. He looked up and said, oh, and since right before impact. No airbags in this sport. Oh, I'm going to go to Jaguars and Vikings, which surprisingly was a very good game. Yeah, it was a really yeah. good game. Yeah. Hey, man, let's talk about Adrian Peterson, man. This guy, <laughs> he's playing like he wasn't even hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, I would not have thought that this guy knee was – totally destroyed right. last year. The way he was breaking tackles, running through tackles, running with speed, cutting aggressively. I mean, he, he if Derrick Rose can come back like this, we're going to the championship yeah. next yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you saw the videos, and, and Med touched on this before we went on air, is the dude was a machine in his workouts, man. The videos that he was posting, I mean, he was just Crazy. cutting and moving. Just He had a chip on his shoulder. Right. He wanted to prove a lot of people wrong because a lot of people felt that AP was done. Yep. They thought it was over for him, you wow. know? And that's another running back that's got a lot of wear and tear on him, man. So he, he went to the offseason like, hey, I'm about to recuperate and come back like the Terminator, baby. They win 26 to 23. Maurice Jones Drew, I know you held out, but the holdout is over. Cut your damn hair, man. Get your grooming <laughs> in order. Okay. Man. <laughs> he looked, hey, man, hold on. He looked like hey, Jamie man. Fox in The Soloist. When, 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 he, when he came back into that press conference, I, I, I didn't said, even recognize man, him. I'm like, I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, who the heck is this at the press conference? I'm like, <laughs> <It's>, oh, <laughs> oh, really? I thought, oh, he, I thought he was man. doing the, the, the Williams act from Texas, just going the, underground, yeah, like yeah, smoking right. a lot of reefer and living in a <laughs> dark attic. It ain't good for him that he, that he got a fat neck, too. So yeah, like, I'm you know like, man, his shoulders look, are by his ears. You, you know? look terrible, Maurice Jones Drew. All right, man, Bills and Jets, and tell you something. The Jets said, okay, one touchdown in the preseason, they opened up a can of whoop ass yeah. on the Buffalo Bills. Mark Sanchez, do you think? There's a little chip on his shoulder. He hears all the Tebow talk, and, and and he's probably that might motivate him to come out and be like, you know what? Let me put all this to rest. This is my team. Of course. And at the end of the day, that little wildcat crap you ran <laughs> netted you 15 yards on about 20 carries. Do you think? Do you think Sanchez is not mad and necessarily mad at Tim Tebow, mm-hmm. but just like mad at the situation? Like, really, fam? Yeah, I think I think that's what it is, man. I, he's he's been hearing. Every, well, first of all. A backup quarterback had a press conference when Tebow signed with the Jets. <laughs> he had a press conference, man. Out the gate, who the or he's the first backup quarterback to have a, a press conference with all the press in New York, New Jersey, that tri-state and area. He was come excited to him. about everything. Right. You know, I'm just excited to be here. Well, I'm excited. But I think Sanchez was just like, okay, well, I'm not going to go out, out in the media and right. create some kind of controversy. Right. I'm just going to let my play do the talking. Well, the thing about it is, uh, the the whole Jet situation this whole offseason was a mess to me. I, I didn't like it. Cause it's a circus. I, cause I was just like, um, wh- why are we? Why do we have Sports Center here all yeah. day, every day? Right. But look, look at that leader, though. It's the leader. Is it, is it, is Rex Ryan. Is it, you, no, I, it had, I had nothing to do with Rex Ryan. I don't, don't think, think so. No, Rex I Ryan, think if Rex Ryan, the, I think he, if he I put think, his foot down and said, "Okay, we're gonna do away with all this press conference, all this stuff, all these cameras here, and we're gonna get down to business." I think he's a big reason for the culture. That that the little, culture, that yes. arrogant okay. that arrogant the swagger culture. and that culture, but that that bleeds out. And then when you don't win, that's why. I remember, we had the, we had a discussion last mm-hmm. week. I said, if if this is Andy Reid, mm-hmm. when I don't think Andy Reid 
job would be on the line. But even though he's been to two AFC championships, mm. if he doesn't get to the Super Bowl to an AFC championship this year, he's going to be on the hot seat. Mm. I just feel that. Because of his mouth, because his mouth is written. You talking about you talking about Rex Ryan? Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan. His okay. mouth is written checks that his ass can't cash. Meanwhile, a guy like Andy Reid has just been quiet and coached. So even or, though or, the Eagles or, or are stay in the same city, uh, Tom Coughlin winning championships. Yeah. And but but well, you don't he gets see killed. but you don't see the hoopla and the ready and anytime like right now they lost to the Giants. I mean to the Cowboys. Cowboys. I said, well, is it time to get get rid of Tom Coughlin? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, no, no. I'm just saying that, oh, okay, that's okay. how that's how it is in New York. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Re- they're ready to fire Tom Coughlin at the drop of a dime. But they're you said you don't think Rex Ryan is on the hot seat no. this year. I think he I is. Think he is. He, he's, think got, so. he's got to win, man. I think he is. And it, when you try and compare him to Tom Coughlin, every time that Tom Coughlin was on a hot seat, the Giants produced. They bailed his ass. They out. produced. So with, with the Jets, they're gonna have to bail Rex Ryan out. And let's and not get it don't. twisted. Tom Coughlin is, is a good coach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He may not be the players guy like Lovey Smith because he's hard on him. Remember what he said. Five, uh, if you're five minutes early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Yeah, yeah. So, I get that. When we come back, more NFL. We're going to talk about a couple of other games. And then we're going to get into how our rookie quarterbacks did. Yeah. And we're going to get into our picks. Yeah. Alright, man. So, let's go. We got a nice full little segment up for you next. Who's on deck right now on the music side, man? The recipe. Ah, Kendrick Lamar. This this right here makes you want to do something. I can't say it on the air, but every time I hear this song, I just want to sit back. Kendrick Lamar, Dr. Dre, the recipe. Let's go. Sports Unplugged. 